and it's just great, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, really good. Yeah. I've seen so many people talking about the Gambia, you know. It's like, it's like they've been there, you know. And most of those who talk about the Gambia and what's happening in the Gambia, they have never been there or they have never experienced what is it like living in the Gambia, you know. So I'm talking about the prostitution in the Gambia, you know, the Ashburns dying in the Gambia. But actually, few of them know what's happening in the Gambia and why are these things happening continuously. And are they happening only on African diasporans or experts moving to, Africa, uh, to Gambia? Oh, even to the locals. But in Gambia uh, has a stark warning for British tourists. The West African country says British women should stop coming to the country looking for flings with younger men. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's early morning here. But I woke up with an idea. I woke up with a conversation I would like to share with you. You know, last year we really... Uh, experienced a lot of news coming from the Gambia, most especially from what was happening to African-Americans or African diasporans in general. And that was death happening continuously of young, amazing women, you know, being, you know, being killed in the Gambia, you know, some maybe dying mysteriously, to rapes in the Gambia, to scams in the Gambia. But today I want to say this straight. At least I want to tell my point why you shouldn't believe everything you see on YouTube about the Gambia. And here's why. Holidays abroad. Remember them? Before the pandemic, Gambia, West Africa was a go-to destination for Europeans in search of winter sun, sea and sex. It's paradise. You could have a different man every night. Gambia is a country located in West Africa, inside Senegal. And it's really, really, really misunderstood by all of us, you, me, and those who move there. But let's ask ourselves, why Gambia is where it is right now? You know, Gambia is facing a lot of poverty happening in the country as of right now. That sometimes can spike crimes, can spike activities that most of us may not agree with. Also, that can also be a problem for those who are moving there. So let's talk about prostitution in the Gambia. Prostitution in the Gambia is branded as sex tourism and it has been going on for so many years, more than we can remember. It has one of the highest causes of tourism in the Gambia. They go with us as well. They love it as well. Okay, well let me put this to you. Prue Leith, who is the, the judge on Bake Off, right? Uh, she goes there for holidays as well and she has reported the following. She says Gambia was a real life Tinder dream for geriatrics. <laughs> <laughs> either by men, either by old women coming to the Gambia, black and white, or whatsoever, but most especially coming from the UK. And that has been going on through generations from Yaya Jame, before even the independence, to Yaya Jame, to who the current president is right now, and always. And it will never change until something is done about it, known directly but systematically putting laws, things that can help young Gambians with an option that can help young Gambians with plan B. No one just saying, go sex tourism. They'll still go back to it again. By words, doesn't solve it. But by action, by doing something for them, by incentivizing, by also telling the young generations that this is the side effect of it. Yes, you may be benefiting a lot of money, you may be benefiting this, you may be, being, you may be taken to UK, to London, you know, to, to, to Germany, whatever. But this is the side effect and this is what it does to the, the generation after. Number two, oh, there's a lot of murders that have been going on in the Gambia since last year. And these murders, most especially, are towards African diasporans, you know. One, uh, two young ladies, you know, they were not old, you know, they were being killed in the Gambia by their mysterious boyfriends. Me today? Some are being attacked, you know, by their, uh, their workers who are ungrateful, you know, towards what they give them. These things happen. These things are happening in the Gambia because of the poverty level in the Gambia. And these things happen most of the time. They don't blame the aspirants. At the same time, they don't blame locals before understanding why are these things continuously happening to a certain group of people? Do they also happen to the locals? And if the answer is yes, 
what should be done to minimize things like this, to minimize what may cause or what may lead to actions that are happening in the Gambia. But let me talk a bit about African diasporans going to the Gambia. No, Gambia is a poor country that is struggling economically, always. And has been struggling economically for as long as I can remember. You know, they've just even constructed their first major highway. You know, that's a big deal. People driving recklessly, like they are rushing somewhere. People losing their lives on the highway. You know, Gambia. So many people have been pushed away. You know, who are making businesses along the along the plots that were demolished to construct. You know, the highway. People. So many businesses were demolished away. From, from the road, <clears throat> so many business, businesses were lost during the process of constructing the highway. That brought intense, that brought a lot of anger, that brought a lot of uh, desperation towards the Gambian population. And that's one of the reasons why you may find things like this are happening. You know, a lot of mugging, so many people are robbed, house robbery, so many people are robbed physically. You know, so many people are even killed just because of that. It may not be direct, but due to what that did to them, the impact it made to them, the desperation it created to them, that's why things are happening. But don't get me wrong. I do not mean that Gambia is insecure. That when you travel to Gambia, you have to be so, so, so cautious. No. Every country around the world is insecure if, if we were to generalize everything. But the level matters a lot, you know. So Gambia is like any other African country or like any European country or like any South American or North American country or Asian country. You don't just walk around holding your, your most expensive properties, you know, on your hands. You don't just walk around arrogantly showing off that you have this so and so and so and so. You know, you will be a, a victim. You will be, you know, putting yourself in a certain situation that you are likely to become a victim. So the same applies to the Gambia. We should not generalize what's happening in the Gambia to say it's happening all over Africa. We should not generalize what's happening in some parts of the Gambia to generalize that it's happening all over Gambia in general. And also, those who don't know, there are black, uh, black American or black diaspora families that are making it out hard in the Gambia. I mean, it's all of this. The black acres in the Gambia, you know, is this Jamaican family, in the, uh, the Jamaican couple in the Gambia, who are really making it out in uh, real estate. And they're progressing. It does not mean they don't find, you know, hurdles. But how do they deal with those hurdles? It's what makes everything nice. It's what makes everything different. I'm not telling you that uh, what people are saying about the Gambia are wrong, but what I'm trying to tell you is uh, be cautious. Gambia is a place where you will find a lot of sex tourism, like anywhere. You may be a victim in all ways. Oh, you may be a predator looking for a young boy from the Gambia, looking for a young girl in the Gambia, to use your money to convince them to be part of the sex tourism. But because of you as a diaspora, because of you as a tourist, I hope really we understand each other properly. Before we say Gambia is no longer a country for African diasporans to move to, let us analyze what is this, what's causing all this then when we analyze all of that, then describe it point by point and understand the number of diasporans who are continuously moving to the Gambia, don't they see that? And those who are already there, have been there for many years, how have they managed to navigate through all of this? Are they facing the bad side of the Gambia? Or they're just facing the good side of the Gambia? What's your point? What's your conversation on it? What's your opinion on it? Again, Gambia is a poor country that's totally developing. 
that totally needs attention, that totally needs investment, that totally needs a lot to do when it comes of improvement with you know, you know, infrastructure, improvement with security, improvement with service delivery, improvement with things to do for families. I myself, I lived in the Gambia with my wife and my kids and experienced the other side of the Gambia, the bad side of it, and experienced the good side of it. But our experience should not determine your journey to the Gambia or your research about the Gambia if you're planning to move there. Because like East and West, you decide where you want to move. You go where you feel you treated the best. You go where you feel you called. My experience shouldn't determine your experience there. But before you make that move, kindly do your research. Kindly, don't base on YouTube of everything. All your inquiries, don't base don't them on YouTube. Do your research. Make that wise move. And you enjoy your stay anywhere you want to live. In Africa, in Southeast Asia, in South America, in North America, whatsoever. I remain Samil from the Lab Effect. Don't forget to like, share, comment, press that subscription button. We out.